Welcome back everyone. This is Axum from Fire Ambrose. And today we're going to be talking about a concept of reclassing in Fire Emblem series. This video is basically a small little guide to help you understand reclassing and when you should reclass and what utilities it has to offer for your playthroughs. For starters, reclassing began in Shadow Dragon the remake, not in Awakening, and is a concept that involves taking a unit and transforming it from its base class to another one. In Shadow Dragon and New Mystery, the remakes, there are almost no limit to what class you can reclass to. In the future installments, however, this idea was refined and limitations were added along with the existence of an item, usually a second seal, that's required to reclass, making it a resource cost as well. For starters, I want to touch upon why you should reclass. For the case of Shadow Dragon, reclassing has no cost whatsoever. You just choose a different class for the character you want to utilize and change it to that class. Now, the utility of this is very obvious very early on. You need a flyer for a map, you just reclass straight to a flyer for that map, and you can reclass back to something else later on. Sometimes it was worthwhile to reclass Sita into a general or into a sniper in New Mystery of the Emblem because of the higher stats or thresholds that were needed to meet in order to perform certain levels of combat. Chris was reclassed multiple times as well, going between different classes such as horseman, warrior, general, and so on and so forth. Ultimately, Reclassing in Shadow Dragon is basically what do you need on this map right now or what do you need in general and you just reclass to that. Is it stats or is it motility? In the future games, it started to get a little different. The concept of reclassing became less about what do you need right now in terms of motility versus stats but became more of like what skills can you obtain. Reclassing in Awakening and Fates is basically all about what skills can you obtain from that class. In those games, you usually can do a combination of leveling up in the main class that you have, pick up a skill, reclass to another class, pick up that skill, and then reclass back or remain in the new class. These combinations are really good for things such as Vantage Vengeance on a Sorcerer in Fates, or combinations such as Saul in Strong Repost on a Master Ninja. I'm going to use Laszlo as an example here. Laszlo is a character that used to fly under my radar a lot, because he didn't really seem like he had a lot of things going for him, but when you think about it, Laszlo is actually really good. For a couple of reasons. Laszlo can level up in Hero for a little bit, get Soul and Strong Repost, then immediately reclass into a Master Ninja, which is his basic line, and get all the goodies that come from having 1-2 range on one of the best classes of the game, plus lethality. So Laszlo really has a lot going for him that is more because of the fact that he can reclass than it is actually because of his own capabilities itself. His reclass sources are free and easy because he has Ninja for free, making it a lot easier. But in Awakening and in Fates, you can also manipulate how the characters get certain classes to reclass into, depending on the pairings that you make. So make good use of your pairings within romantic relationships and friend relationships in order to be able to pass on certain classes to the characters you want, be it the children later on that inherit classes from their parents, or the friendships that you're going to make in Fates in order to be able to reclass people into the buddy system class. You want the abilities that come with them so that you can basically build your character to stack multiple different skills that have synergy with each other. Ultimately, your goal is to reach a unit that has been reclassed a couple of times in order to get those resources that are necessary. Sometimes characters don't need to be reclassed. Some people really like Ryoma to reclass into Master of Arms to pick up life and death and then go back. I personally don't think it's necessary. Ryoma does his job more than enough in the class that he's already in. But it's always interesting to see that that is an option that's available in case you wanted to have that option as well for Ryoma. In Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia, reclassing is a little bit different in which you only have the pitchfork to reclass players into the Villager class. Now the Dreadfighter can automatically go into the Villager class after, but for any other character that's not inside that needs to utilize a pitchfork that's only obtainable by DLC in order to reclass into a Villager. Because of that, what winds up happening in Shadows of Valencia is that you just wind up doing this Dreadfighter loop in which you put someone into Dreadfighter, level them up, they reborn again as a villager and then they go back to Dreadfighter and then they reborn again go into Villager and then Dreadfighter and so on and so forth. Given that, I don't really consider Shadows of Valencia, but more I consider it as a branching promotion option for the trainees that you get, or the villagers in this case. In Three Houses, there's a lot of reclassing because you want to pick up the intermediate class skills from each class line if possible. These intermediate class skills allow you to have access to powerful things such as death blow and that really increase your damage on player phase and allow you to be more aggressive with your play style. Reclassing in this case allows you to basically obtain these perks along the way to reach a main class. It's not to say that you won't pivot from one side to another, but it is a lot harder to change from one class to another in three houses for me at least 
because of the fact of the cost efficiency of having to train in that mastery. So for example, if you are a war master with Felix and you suddenly decide you want to go into a horse knight, you can, but you have to make sure that you have been having Felix use a bow the whole time and that he's been training up these other proficiencies as well so that he's not lacking behind and has access to the specific tree skills of those proficiencies that he's been training in. For Engage, this changes a little bit because now you don't inherit the skills that you get because you inherit them off the emblems. So reclassing and engage actually has more to do to slotting a unit into the correct utilization of their stats as opposed to obtaining a skill. An example of this is something like Chloe. Chloe is fantastic as a Griffin Knight, really, really good. But I've had the most fun ever playing Fire Emblem Engage when I reclass Chloe into a Martial Master after I've already obtained Hortensia and Ivy. At this point, my flyers are pretty much taken care of reclassing Chloe into a martial master with her high speed and access to flashing fists allow her to be able to double anything in the game. Once you get the Erica emblem on her, you see upwards of 100 damage on units that you would otherwise have no business taking out in one round, which to me is very very interesting and I really like that. A lot of people disagree and think that martial master is a pretty bad class and I totally see where they're coming from. Even though it's limited to one range, I definitely see the advantage of having a really really high staff rank along with the ability to player phase delete almost any character in the game, even at one range. Trick to the wise, if you add advance onto them from the Roy Emblem, which costs really cheap, you actually now have a 1-2 range fist user, which is pretty, pretty useful on player phase. Another classic example of this is Anna in Fire Emblem Engage. Her class that she comes in, Warrior, doesn't really shine with her attributes at all. If you're going to utilize Anna, usually people recommend putting into her Sage or Mage Knight or something that capitalizes on her magical potential that she can access it earlier on and be able to utilize it to her strengths. I want to point out something. You should not be afraid to switch back to another class if it's not working for you. Reclassing is a distribution of resource management in which you have to utilize the correct resource for this moment in time. The chapter that you are playing right now is the one that matters the most because it's the one you have to complete in order to continue on. So unless you're comfortable with the situation that you're in, knowing that even though you're doing a suboptimal little setup in order to get better skills for later on, which is very common in Fates, focusing on each chapter at a time is a very valuable thing, which is why I really like Shadow Dragon because it instills this really good habit into people of learning how to deal with each map at a time, focusing your resources to finish each map at a time. If for a certain portion of the game you need a flyer, go ahead and reclass a unit into a flyer. If later on you need them to go back to being a physical unit, go ahead and change them back to a physical unit. As long as your resources are being well spent and they're allocated correctly, there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing multiple reclasses within one run. Another thing that I want to touch upon is the fact that weapon rank is a very very important thing in reclassing. For a game like Engage in which the weapon rank is locked to whatever the reclass is, it's fine to reclass. However, something like Fates in which the weapon rank is locked individually to each unit's proficiency with those weapons might be a little more costly because now if you switch from a tree that has nothing to do with the tree that they were previously in, you might be stuck with E rank in every single weapon type and it might be quite the drag in order to bump that unit up unless you have access to arm scrolls. Ultimately, reclassing depends on how many second seals do you have available, how much gold do you have available in order to make those reclasses occur, abilities or utility that you can gain with reclassing, allocation of stats, gains and caps into the unit that you're performing the reclass with and don't really reclass if you're not going to gain anything significant right then and there. Changing from a one range physical unit to another one range physical unit in which both of the options of one two ranges aren't that good, say for example a hand axe and a kodachi, isn't really worth it unless you're really comfortable with the idea of making that new unit focus on that role. The loss in weapon rank alone should be enough to deter you from being able to make this change because the cost of it will not outweigh the benefits of the ability that you gain. It is one thing to change for one level and get a skill, it is completely different to pigeonhole yourself into a class that's not really functional for what you're trying to set up. In conclusion, I believe that reclassing is one of the most powerful tools that exist in Fire Emblem while you are playing the games and should be readily and often utilized in order for completion. I think also that reclassing needs to be looked at in terms of resource management and how you want to apply the distribution of your abilities and skills into these new characters that you're going to have switch into these roles. Never be afraid to reclass, but do make sure that if you're going to reclass that there is a purpose involved in that reclassing option. If you're going to reclass Nilly Willy, at least search up the different gains that you might obtain from reclassing into that.
I hope this video has helped you into looking into reclassing and what different options you should pursue or what you should be looking at when you are performing a reclass option. And I hope that this will help you in your future endeavors of playing Fire Emblem. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please leave a like and subscribe down below. And we'll be seeing you guys soon. Thank you so much and bye bye.